Hello traders. This is my uh, weekend video. Give you a real quick recap. Uh, I think we're, week ahead we're going to see more chop and maybe a little bit more downside action. Uh, but seriously, uh, probably uh, this week, uh, maybe towards the end of the week, we might start seeing some more selling pressure. But I do think we're going to see more, a lot more chop. And uh, can't, I'm not saying we're not going to go up higher because they are manipulating things. Uh, the e I'm going to go over the ETF flows, uh, SKU, um, <clears throat> give an index overview, talk about a little bit about crude, crude oil. Uh, bonds are catching a bid. And uh, and then go over uh, the earnings. Uh, we are in earning uh, retail earnings week, and it's not typically the best week for earnings uh, historically. So just keep that in mind that uh, a lot of stuff going on this week. Okay, I'm going to start with last week, and uh, basically what we saw markets were putting close at new highs or new relative highs. Okay. But yet the S and P's money is coming flowing out, and this is the, the strongest outflows in the S and P's that I, we've seen so far in this run up. Okay, and we also finally got a negative signal on our Russell. We've got more money coming out of Russell than going in this week. And that is an initial signal that our uh, uh, aggressive areas are selling off, and we are catching a bid in our bonds. People are accumulating dollars uh, uh, into the uh, TLT. They're, put, they're putting their money into safety. So just keep that in mind, what's going on here. And basically, we're having money coming out of the S&Ps, but we're putting in new highs. And what's going on here, the market makers are manipulating uh, liquidity by taking money out of the lower cap stocks, S&P 100 stocks, and they're putting it into the higher cap S&P 100 stocks like Boeing to push prices higher to work to the targets they're trying to reach. And because of that, you know, we're getting a disparity. Typically, you would think you have money coming out of the S&Ps that the spot, the spy would come down with it. But because of that manipulation and Boeing being such a powerful, powerful force, it's, it's the most important stock bar, bar none in the stock market because of this weighting, and it's up over 30% this year already. So just keep that in mind that uh, they are manipulating the uh, si situation. Okay, I looked back another two weeks, and uh, it actually started two weeks ago. Money started rotating out of the S&Ps. So I just wanted to point that out, uh, what was going on here. And at the same time, gold money was coming out of the gold ETF while the gold was just going, started going to all-time highs here. So something to keep in mind that money is coming out of the S&Ps. And we got a signal two, uh, two weeks ago that the XLF was showing some relative weakness well ahead of the FOMC meeting. So uh, I just wanted to show, give you that rundown here. It's not just a one-week situation. We've had money starting to roll out of the S&Ps uh, all on this last leg higher in here in uh, January or February. Next thing I want to look at, and that is our SKU. And basically, as of Friday, uh, we've broken down out of this consolidation on our SKU. And basically, SKU is the measure of the total open uh contracts of the uh out of the money calls versus your out of the money puts and we've been, we've been loaded heavily on this sell down to the put side and it looks like they're accumulating even more puts uh, as of friday uh they're they're actually taking putting on more insurance to protect themselves for a downside move so just keep this on your watch that situation is developing that um there is a uh, a little bit more uh, put side accumulation for out of the money puts uh, happening at these uh, lofty levels going into this week. Now we are uh, uh, trading on below average volume here on all this whole track up. And there is no question in my mind we can continue to go higher. But uh, you see these this range highs right here. 
uh, that would put us, uh, we are not too far from there right now. So we're well within the, uh, the accepted, oops, see if I can get this zoomed in here. As you can see, uh, those market highs, you know, we're not too far from that right now. So we get another, uh, you know, uh, uh, another half a percent move on the S&Ps. We're going to be coming right back into these range highs, and that could easily happen Monday. So keep that in mind. We closed near the highs, and it really looked like a short squeeze into the close. I think they're really trying to push the S&Ps to tie these uh, prior highs, and then we're going to start seeing some responsive selling. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we do have uh, even more tightening range uh, of our market maker moves this week. Similar situation, this prior uh, point of control and monthly topping resistance area, we're right here in that realm. And just a few more points higher in the, in the uh, NASDAQ is going to hit that resistance area too. So that's why I kind of think we're going to open up Monday with a slightly green open. And then we might start fading from that point uh, in these markets. But then again, it could gap down Monday. But uh, that's just a, a, a scenario I'm looking at here that we are coming into some reference highs that um, considering the money flows in the ETS. Now, the uh, IWM, like I said, the money flows are negative. We've actually, we're already actually into that uh, high range. So just um, I just don't see too much more gas in the fuel tank for our Russell this week. And diamonds, keep in mind, it's really he heavily weighted the uh, Boeing. And all depending on Boeing here, uh, we're already at a uh, monthly high. And uh, if the market makers do want to continue it higher, we do have another monthly high right next to it. So uh, we're talking about another uh, dollar, dollar sixty, another dollar sixty higher if they continue to push Boeing higher. And if you look at your Boeing chart. As you can see, we're getting right up here in nosebleed area. This is a monthly resistance trend line. And we get up to around the, uh, getting awful close to the 420, uh, 428, 430 area. Uh, there's going to be some very serious resistance on Boeing to push higher. And so far, we've already, we don't really have any value built out at this price point. So very significant resistance up here in nosebleed area for Boeing. And I do think the market makers are doing their best to, to get up here on this trend line. And it might be, it might take a couple days. They may, may keep it up here a couple days, but it looks like that uh, they are really trying to uh, keep these markets alive by keeping Boeing elevated. Uh, one of the top stocks ha uh, hitting Friday. And that was our AMD. And what I like about this chart, we're crossing out of this trend line, but it's not necessarily a low volume breakout. Okay. We got high volume here that we're breaking out a trend. So that's constructive for an upside move. Plus we have historical value uh, up here. So I'm thinking uh, you're going to get 2525 this week on uh, AMD. Uh, it's a very... Uh, bullish looking pattern to me setting up here for this week another one i'm looking at here for a ge breakout and uh, i got my counts down here i'm sorry they're kind of misleading uh the only problem with ge i don't really like how the profiles they don't really have any uh monthly value build out so this is a momentum trade in my opinion basically you know once the momentum starts everybody and their brother's going to be covering their shorts so but yeah, we are on the E, uh, or number five, whichever you want to call it. It's number five on the broader move, and then this is the E of uh, number five. So typically, this is a significant breakout on your uh, Elliott wave, in my opinion. So just keep that in mind that we could see some a pretty good little bid here uh, for General Electric based on my wave counts. And I really don't like uh, the uh, financials, but we'll see what happens. Um, we have this downtrending trend line. It, it continues to reject that. Uh, 
we have overlapping value right here. So I'm not overly bearish because even the weekly uh, value areas seem to be overlapping quite a bit. But this, uh, the financials are looking pretty weak, uh, especially if you look at your XLF. Uh, I've showed it on the prior video. You know, we got this trend line, uptrend line we've had, and we've been for multiple days now, we've been chugging along along that trend line. And uh, we are going to be open Monday. We're going to be outside of it opening at Monday. I'm not reading a whole lot into us getting breaking out of that because we do have historical support, uh, volume support down here. It's not like we're breaking out below the bottom. Um, it's um, it does have some historical support. And if you go on your uh, weekly webs, uh, we didn't even break down uh, below the uh, v weekly VPOC. I mean, we were coming into this trend line uh, as of uh, tomorrow, and we were still holding value up at these levels with an, with an overlapping VPOC right behind it. So even though you're coming into a trend line, it's really important to understand how volume has related to that trend line to uh, have a ma major bearish scenario on the, on the situation. Okay, Microsoft. Okay, this is one of my most bullish scenarios. We had a rocket move right up into the trend line, and most of the volume hit right on top of that trend line. So if the markets catch any type of bid, I think the markets really want to break out of this scenario. And as you can see, this, down, this downtrending line, that is a very strong close uh, for Microsoft for possible continuation. There's a lot of money going into the software sector and uh, some of them not, not justified, but uh, it does look like a, a significant bid is um, being sustained here on Microsoft. My big issue with Microsoft, because of the massive run up, you don't really have a Bollinger Band squeeze situation for short covering. So whatever it does, the push out here is going to have to be new money coming in, pushing it. And as I pointed out, the NASDAQ, the uh, the queues were actually getting a, uh, last week, uh, they were taking money out of the queues. So, but Microsoft is a heavyweight, just like Boeing. And seeing this breakout in Microsoft being the heaviest weighting of the queues, along with Boeing, suggest to me that the market makers might be manipulating um, the facts pushing pri pushing prices for the for the, for the market movers or the, the the main companies I think it's the same scenario as Boeing that they're manipulating things so basically we closed at the or above the 11051 that was the uh, December uh, highs and we the next stop would be the November highs um, value area highs the 111.67 so like I said the uh, I'm really concerned about not having a short squeeze to push it higher JD was breaking out and in my uh, Shanghai composite uh, it has room to run over uh, come Sunday night I had mentioned that in my prior video so I'm not going to I'm not going to show it right now but we do have this uh, inverted head and shoulders and we are threatening a breakout on strong volume Friday Look at that! Look at that strong volume that hit that. They have been accumulating this for weeks, and buddy, I really think it's going to take off to the moon here, uh, pretty soon here for a run up to the twenty-nine area if the markets hold. But I think the easy money is going to be the twenty-seven area. Um, that's the prior uh, volume point of control back in October. Okay. Now, Micron, like I uh, it's not a big market cap uh, relative to some of uh, like Boeing or uh, or uh, Microsoft. So I'm not quite, uh, we got overlapping value right here at a uh, resistance area. And uh, it has broken, last time we came into it, it broke down and rotated lower. And we do have a trend line resistance area here too. So there's a lot of resistance uh, pegging, pinning mic uh, Micron. And uh, if the markets were to get, catch a sell signal, I think Micron is probably going to rotate to the south side instead of breaking out to the upside. 
Apple's got below average volume, but it is breaking, trying to break out of this wet wedge consolidation. All this volume down here, it's it's trying to push out above that. So I think it's going to make a run up to the 175 area uh, this week. So uh, like I said, there's a little bit more fuel in the fuel tank on the markets and uh, another $3 move quite likely for Apple this week. NVIDIA, what I'm looking here for NVIDIA is, you see how the vo volume built out real solid back in November for NVIDIA, and then we got a responsive breakout? Well, since then, the past two months, we didn't get it. But we had the earnings come out, it gapped up, and now we have a nice solid volume build out again for NVIDIA. So I am looking for a move back up to this resistance zone, uh, the 167 area possibly this week for NVIDIA. U.S. Steel caught some upgrades, but you see the volume profile, it's very weak up here. It hasn't really been able to hold up at these values. So I'm not saying it's going to sell off hard, but I say that there's not a lot of value uh, to support price at these valuations. And considering it's a low cap, lower cap stock, and that's where the money's coming out of the S&P 100. Uh, it's not necessarily a place that I would want to uh, be pushing to the long side. Yeah, I've done a lot of analysis on Netflix here. And uh, I do think uh, the pattern's weakening for Netflix. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, we got overlapping value. It keeps putting value up at higher above the... Uh, prior month's uh, levels. And here we are going into the last week of the month. That we've built out a lot of value up here. So we'll see what happens. And we got overlapping value here too. Um, it looks like value is gonna be, gonna be going into March up in these areas. So it's not something that I necessarily, barring news, I wouldn't want to be overly short uh, Netflix going into March. Uh, Sunday night, 60 Minutes is t talking about electric cars out of China. And basically, those companies are dirt cheap versus Tesla. And so I think with that news event uh, and considering the lofty valuations for Tesla, we are likely, possibly Monday, even coming down to the 280 area uh, on a rapid descent um, this week. And then, uh, so... It's not a situation that I would want to be in myself. So uh, according to my wave counts, we are in the D. So this one here can move pretty darn quick. So we could actually blow through the 280. And uh, the sad part about it is uh, if we continue down at these areas, Elon's going to be losing a whole lot of money because he's got, he took a lot of his personal money in uh, Tesla calls. And uh, so he's got a big leverage situation and uh, the markets smell blood, you know, in the, under that situation. Not to mention, we all know that he's got some major bonds that are coming due, and he's going to have to get outside financing just to keep the company afloat. And uh, so just keep that in mind that uh, a lot of issues with the high valuations in Tesla. J&J &J got some upgrades there Friday. Nice little, nice bid, and this is a consumer staple. So this, uh, people rotate money into consumer staples, undervalued st consumer staples, if they're worried about, uh, you know, got a little bit of fear in the markets. Coming right back up to the 125 SMA. So on, and we're building out value up here. You notice we didn't have any type of value before. This is actually a launching platform for J&J. &J. Uh, I would like to see, after such a big pot spike, I would like to see the Bollinger Bands tighten up for a breakout move to the upside, just in my opinion. Because you do have resistance, uh, uh, valuary resistance at this level. And I would like to see a, like a week of digestion and then uh, start adding to the long side on J&J. &J. PayPal, breaking out to all-time highs. I did uh, trade this Friday, made a little bit of money on it, not much, but uh, very strong pattern. 
Nike, I do think uh, this is a topping formation for Nike, especially with all the retail coming out this week. So uh, we're just waiting for some downgrades to hit Nike. And I do think, uh, you see how hot, how low the value for Nike was supposed to be down here. Okay. And look at the earnings. It sold off on earnings back in uh, December. It got all the way down here to $67. It's way up here now. And there's really no news supporting the price other than the upgrades. So I do think it's lofty. More likely it's going to come back down to 80, uh, especially after the news, uh, the scandal, or the news there on the ball court, the shoe blowing apart. I think it's a healthy digestion back to the 90, 80, 50 area. So that'd be a $4.20 decline in uh, Nike. Okay, I don't know what's going to happen with retail this week, but retail is all over the news. And so far, Amazon has been digesting, winding up for one heck of a move. And uh, we've got this nice, this, this doesn't typically happen with Amazon, a nice tight consolidation into a trend line. So I don't know how this is all going to work out, but as far as explosive moves go, Amazon's the one set up. So basically, I wanted to talk about Amazon, and uh, we're actually on a bearish cloud going in, uh, into this trend line, but we'll see. But you got this nice squeeze pattern going on with Amazon with the uh, MACD crossing to the upside on our Amazon. So it's, it, it's, it's slightly leaning to the bullish scenario. And if you go down on your one hour, I think it's the same thing. It's even tightening up more on our one hour, and we do we are on the bullish side of the cloud. Now, the real thin cloud that does it's not overly supportive. So depending on the news. So basically, what I in this situation, I'm kind of waiting for the trend line cross on volume, and then I will consider a long position on the Amazon. But yeah. You do not typically see a, a massive uh, crush, uh, volatility crush in Amazon like this. Uh, so it all depends on the markets, but uh, I do think there's a little bit more fuel in the fuel tank to the upside. But then again, uh, Amazon doing this, something like this, it could be a lot bigger than what, uh, um, what we're normally used to. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we are getting, on the one hour, we're actually getting a bearish cross. So that's hard to say. But, I mean, we could bait easily Monday morning, gap up 10 point, or 15 points, and boom, we're gone. Off to the races, going into core earnings week. Now, they were accumulating bonds there uh, last week. Okay? But the way I've got my, the way I've, Looking at my wave count, A, B, C, D, I think we've actually started a more bearish tone in our TLT, our bonds, uh, breaking away from this uptrend line in the short term. Now, that doesn't mean I, I think it's just going to completely collapse. I do think there's a chance that we're going to come back down to the 119.15 area this week. Um, that is outside the expected move. Maybe, maybe not this week, but the 120.38, that's our expected move for the week. So <clears throat> right now we're holding that trend line, but according to my wave counts, we might be leaning to the south side earlier this week and maybe uh, then uh, going to the north side. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That adds to the um, bullish scenario for the week. My absolute favorite stock, Xlinex. They focus on 5G networks. And guess what? The telecom conference, global telecom conference, is starting this week, and it's all about 5G. And we saw the breakout starting Friday. And, buddy, I think this is off to this week. I think we're probably going to – there's a chance we're going to see $132 a share on uh, another $8 move, on a uh, $758 move on uh, – Excellent X, who they do, they are do have exposure to the uh, 5G networks. And uh, a lot of these 5G stocks, I think, are ready to take off to the moon this week. So uh, that's another thing, uh, the, the um, conference going on, I think, supportive 
of the uh, uh, semiconductors this week. So that's why I'm not overly bearish this week. I do think we're going to get a little bit of a more... Uh, it's going to be difficult to push to the upside because of the money coming out of the SPY and everything. I'm just thinking that... Um, um, just something to keep on your on your watch here. That um, I do think there's a slight more bullish tone at the first of the week, and uh, semiconductors because of the conference are going to catch a bid. Okay, that's all I got to say. And this is one of my longest videos. I'm sorry about all the information. And oh yeah, uh, I I think the 130. I, I I'm actually calling for 150 before uh, the next earnings call. So just keep that in mind that I do think there's a major push into the uh, 5g stocks that's all i gotta say and i will see you guys in the uh next morning video oh yeah uh like the video if you like it and if you don't like it be sure and leave me comments so i can improve my videos in the future and if you got news or anything that is happening this week uh ideas that i've missed i do appreciate if you make some comments down below or leave me your contact information on uh, Twitter, and that way I can get with you so I can, you know, learn what I can learn. Uh, I do think that, uh, but there's two main things driving things going this week, and that's a, um, the batteries for, uh, or the electric cars out of China, that's going to be hitting the markets, and th this whole tele telecom conference that's hitting this week, they're going to be driving forces for technology. So, uh, good luck.